Good evening, St. Thomas, and welcome to our last Lenten midweek service. Let us pray. O oh God of surprise, you offer us so much more than our own limited plans and vision. You take our place, becoming our salvation through the cross. As we walk through this wilderness time, strengthen our hearts and our minds to follow Jesus on the road to Jerusalem. When we betray like Jesus, deny like Peter, and scatter like the disciples, forgive our frailties. Bring us the promise of resurrection and new life in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do you say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you have set your mind not on divine things, but on human things. The Gospel of the Lord. Now our theme for our Lenten devotions for this, the final week of Lent, is a change of plans. Now I never imagined when we chose this Lenten series way back in January, how on the nose it would be or how much our lives have changed in the last several weeks. But I guess the Holy Spirit is kind of sneaky like that. I had plans for how the season would go, and it ended up absolutely nothing like I had planned. And I suspect that every one of you has some experience with unexpected changes in their plans right now. If you had a plan for anything, it has probably changed probably several times in recent weeks. Financial plans, medical plans, travel plans, family plans, even just your everyday plans like meeting up with friends or the basics of how life works, like when and where and what to eat, have all gone out the window in recent weeks. And what plans we do try to have seem to change at least every other day. And it is hard. Me. I'm a planner. I like to think ahead. I like to have a plan. And that makes times like these especially hard. I am mourning the plans that I have lost. I had so many plans for how to make this my first Holy Week at St. Thomas especially meaningful and special for you. I had plans for how ministry would go here. I had plans for my kids for this spring. So many great fun plans for the big community Easter egg hunt and the marshmallow drop, plans to celebrate Easter with my family and to dye eggs and dress up and have our big family dinner, plans to take my boys to tulip time in May and to see my sister. Heck, even the basic plans to have Alex complete kindergarten and Ben finish preschool. But now we have no plans. No idea what the future holds, other than probably many more weeks at home. 
But we are not the first people to have suddenly found all of our plans being changed on the spot. It is seen even today in our reading from the Gospel of Matthew, where Peter suddenly has all of his best laid plans changed. Because at the beginning of the story, Peter had a plan, a good plan. Peter knew that Jesus was the Messiah, and he thought that he knew what that meant. Because there was a plan for the Messiah. Being the Messiah meant that Jesus was the new king of Israel. He would raise an army and fight a huge and mighty war to conquer the Roman army and all of Israel's enemies, to clear all the foreign invaders from the land, rebuild Jerusalem, and then reign as king like David founding a generation, a dynasty that would last countless generations. That was the plan. Everybody knew it. They had been waiting for nearly 600 years for the right person to come and fulfill it. But then Jesus goes and tells them that instead, he is going to Jerusalem, not at the head of an army, not to conquer it, but to suffer be humiliated, and be killed. That was not the plan. Is it any wonder that Peter objected? Wasn't the original plan way better? Power and glory or humiliation and death? It seems like a no-brainer. But Peter missed a vital part. That on the third day, Jesus would be raised that death would no longer have the final word, not just for Jesus, but for anyone. But you can't get to the good part without going through the hard stuff. God's plan was actually way better than Peter's, but it took quite a while for Peter to see it that way. So while we mourn the loss of all of our own old plans, we would be, we would be wise to keep a lookout for what new plans God has in store for us. New ways of living, new ways of being, new ways of staying connected that will come out of this time in seclusion. We may seem to be in a period of suffering and death, but one day God will rise to new life and we will rise with him. And God has a plan for us, even if he is still waiting to reveal it. Amen. Oh,